Hey guys, welcome back to the Daily Devo, where you're walking with me through my daily walk in Christ. Now today, we're going to be talking about a couple characters, one by the name of King Solomon, and another by the name of the Queen of Sheba. Now I've heard about this name of Queen of Sheba, maybe you have as well. I never really understood that that was an actual person, but you know what? The Queen of Sheba is an actual person, and it's scriptural. And so we're talking about a unique kind of um, meet up between these two people. Now, before we get into it, you got to understand Solomon is now in his story In our story. We're going to be picking up in second Chronicles chapter nine. Solomon has been established inside of his kingdom and boy, howdy is he established? I mean, we see King David. Now we know the story of King David. We're very familiar with David and his victories at war. That was something that David was known for. For being a very warlike king. He was fantastic on the battlefields and strategy and whatnot. That's what King David was really known for as a king in that area. But then his son Solomon comes on it, and Solomon's not the battler. He's not a war king. Solomon is very much a wealth king. He is so wealthy. He is known as one of the most wealthiest, if not the wealthiest king in all of history. That's just, that's the, how we know King Solomon. And so we have the Queen of Sheba here who is hearing about this wealth, not only the wealth, but the wisdom that is coming from Solomon. And she says, I have to check this out for myself. So the Queen of Sheba comes and visits King Solomon. And after seeing everything, his temple, the house of God, just the, even the clothes that his servants were wearing and how they served, it said something beautiful. At the end of verse 4, it says this, there was no breath in her. Literally, she was speechless. She was just like, oh. This and that's the queen of Sheba, someone who is probably very used to extravagance. So you can think maybe someone like you or I or whatever like that. Well, we're not used to maybe seeing stuff like that coming in there. We would be amazed and breathless. But someone who is the queen is breathless at just the amount of of wealth and amount of power, amount of majesty that is she is seeing before her eyes. It must have mean the kingdom that Solomon had built up must have been crazy awesome. But what we see here is something that I thought I just wanted to share with you. Because we have someone here, the Queen of Sheba, who who isn't someone who was following after Yahweh, who wasn't a follower of the Lord, coming in and being amazed at the blessings that the Lord had given to Solomon. And something that you and I need to understand from the story is that the true blessings of God is something that even the world is going to have their breath taken away from when they see it. So often we can get this idea that what the world offers is actually superior to what God offers. At least that's the narrative that the world is trying to paint for us and share with us. That the things that God gives is actually draining us, that is sucking the life and the fun out of our stories and out of our lives. It wants to paint this picture that if you follow God, what you're going to get from God isn't anywhere near as good as what the world can offer. But this story that we're seeing right here unfolding is really the truth behind the statement of that what, the, what God offers is so much more superior than what the world offers. We see a queen of the world just being breathless at seeing what God can offer his people. And I want to share with you as well, the true blessings of God, the, the life that we have, the forgiveness that we find in him, the purpose that comes in our life from following him, the true blessings of God that you and I can receive is truly breathtaking to the rest of the world. If they really look into it and really see the, the amount that God can give inside a relationship with him, they're going to respond just like the Queen of Sheba did. That's going to be what I wanted to just share with you here today. Don't be listening to the narrative that the world is trying to share with you that what God gives isn't worth it. That what the world gives is so far superior to what God gives. That is so false on so many levels. The enemy is just wanting you to hear this so that you will fall prey to his trap so that we won't be receiving that blessings. We won't be going after the promises that God is giving us. So I just wanted to share with you here. Know this. 
the true blessings that God gives can even take the breath away from anyone of the world. And so I want to share with you what God gives is so much better. Don't be deceived and listen to the narrative that the world is trying to share with you. Listen to what scripture is saying. See the examples that scripture is giving and showing just how good what God gives really is. And let's make sure that we are going after that rather than what the world is trying to tell us to go after. Well, guys, that's going to be my message for you today. Let me pray for you. We'll get out of here. Father, thank you so much for today. And thank you for letting us have stories like this to remind us that the world is lying to us and you are telling the truth. And I pray that we continue to go after you. We love you. We thank you. Name I pray. Amen. Well, hey, guys, as always, I want you to know I love you, but Jesus loves you more. Thanks for watching. See ya.